How do I use heat therapy, like a sauna or steam room, to aid in athletic performance? I've tried going in the sauna for 45 minutes to an hour at 140 degrees, and I found it decreased my performance. What am I doing wrong? All right. Awesome question. So, yeah. So for those who don't know, or those who haven't heard of it, heat therapy is basically getting yourself into some environments that are really, really hot, right? So for a lot of us, most of us who don't do like steam room or sauna, it's just being out doors in the summer, right? It's really hot. We notice that the same four mile loop that we normally do feels a lot harder just because of the heat. Um, but here we're talking like targeted, intentional heat therapy. Um, I would say, so starting off heat therapy, right? Heat in general is a stress on the body. And so the protocol that you use to implement heat therapy needs to be really, really specific. Otherwise, you're going to do more harm than good. Um, because again, a stress is a stress, right? Whether you go out and run 20 miles, or you, you know, I don't know, do a bunch of occlusion therapy, or you do sauna for an hour, like, it's all sort of registered as stress on the body. And so if you overstress your body and doesn't and you don't give it time to recover and adapt, then you're not going in the right direction of adaptation uh, and improvement. And so, you know, at that point, it just becomes extra stress without you actually reaping the benefits of the heat therapy. Um, so first, let's just talk real quick for those who don't know about what the benefits can be if you correctly do heat therapy. Um, probably the main benefit that people highlight is the increase in blood plasma volume. Right. And so what that basically means is you increase your blood plasma volume. Therefore, you know, given no other bottlenecks in your physiology, increased blood plasma volume will equate to you being able to carry more oxygen in your blood, therefore being able to deliver more oxygen to your muscles, therefore, you know, hopefully resulting in greater athletic performance. Um, think uh, some people refer to it as like, you know, legal doping, right? Because a lot of performance enhancing doping kind of involves artificially increasing your blood plasma volume and whatnot. So this is like a really natural, really obviously, you know, legal way to do that uh, similar result. Um, it's also used in altitude acclimation or altitude training. So that increased oxygen can aid in your ability to adapt to higher altitude. Um, if you're say like you normally live, say we're in New York city, right? We're very low in altitude. If you have an event in Colorado and you're going to go up, you know, seven, 8,000 feet, one thing you can do is use sauna or steam room, uh, to help in, you know, in that adaptation so that when you go up to altitude, it's not that big of a hit. Um, and then finally it's through thermoregulated, uh, effects. And what that basically means is right? You're training really cold, right? It's not now, but say, say this is back in January, February, right? New York city is really cold. Your sweat efficiency, your sweat rate, things like that might not be adapted to hot environments, right? Cause we're used to running in the cold and, you know, it's dreary outside. Um, and we're, our sweat rate is obviously lower because it's colder outside. So then if you were to fly to Miami and race a, a half marathon, your body will feel that half a lot harder, you know, a lot of us experienced that this year with Boston Marathon, it being, you know, unseasonably warm. Um, in the grand scheme of things, it might not be so warm or so hot. But because your body's not used to it, it'll impact, it'll hit your body a lot harder than it normally would. So that's called thermoregulation. Um, and so getting your body used to dealing with that heat before you get into that environment can be helpful. Um, okay, so this person who emailed in, you say they do 45 to 60 minutes at a time at 140 degrees, um, which if you don't know the temperature of your sauna at your gym or something, 140 is, it's hot, but it's not like scorchingly hot. It's, it, it's, it's still hot, right? You're feeling it, but it's not scorching hot. Um, initially, I'm going to say that 45 to 60 uh, minutes is way too long. That's a really long time to sit in a sauna and it not be super hot. So generally speaking, and obviously like everyone's mileage may vary, right? Like this isn't one size fits all, but generally speaking, what most, you know, athletically leaning coaches or, or science, uh, you know, people will say is 30 minutes at or as close to 160 degrees as you can bear it. 
And so if, if you've never done sauna before, right, say like you always go work out in the gym, but you always see the sauna in, in, in your locker room, but you never really go in there because it's like, I don't, I don't know what's all about that heat. Like, I don't know if I'm going to go in there. So if, if you've never tried it, obviously, like you'll probably last maybe five minutes, which is totally fine. You got to build up to it. But it, eventually you'll get to 30 minutes, 25, 30 minutes, let's say at 160 degrees. That's 160 Fahrenheit. Um, or as close to it as you can bear. Um, and you have to treat it just like you would treat any other stressor on the body. So doing hard track intervals is a stress on the body, right? How do we use track intervals to make us faster when running? You introduce the stress to your body, but then you have to give it time to recover and adapt to that stress. So if you do you know, hard track intervals every day of the week for weeks on end, you're not going to get any faster, right? Because you're getting that stressor part good, but you're not giving your time, your body time to adapt. And so similar with sauna, if people always hit the sauna, but they don't actually give their body time to adapt to it, you're not actually going to benefit as much from it as you otherwise would. So the proposed uh, protocol, and again, it's not an algorithm, right? There's a difference between an algorithm and a protocol in terms of you know, this type of physiological implementations protocol means you follow this thing without deviation. Algorithm means, you know, you're following these things, but there's a lot of if then statements kind of involved in that. Um, the protocol is, say you have a, a, a an A race or a big event that you're training for, and it's, it's going to be in the heat, about 14 days out from that event, you start introducing daily sauna or daily heat therapy. Um, but then you stop that about seven days out from your event. And so when you stop it, that seven days between, you know, the time that you stop it and between, you know, between that and, and your race, that's when your body will recover and sort of adapt from all of that heat stimulus. Um, that's the main idea. Uh, one other thing, some, so this is a little more, not controversial, but some people do this, some people don't. Again, experiment with it. Your mileage may vary. Some people don't rehydrate, as in they don't drink they don't drink water while they're in the sauna. But if you do that, don't forget you have to make sure then you rehydrate when you get out, right? So it doesn't really it won't be so helpful if you basically let that lead to dehydration the entire day. So if you're going to choose to not rehydrate while you're in the actual sauna, you have to make sure to kind of overcompensate and and really rehydrate uh, once you get out of the sauna. Um, the last thing I'll say is I would not do this type of heat therapy before an intense workout, even the day before, ideally you would do it right after an intense workout. That way your body can kind of, you know, recover from it and not hit a hard workout immediately after. So that's the kind of crash course, um, on heat therapy. Any, 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 any questions? Right, so Pat? first of all, this may seem like it's plugged, but I'm always impressed with how smart you are. <laughs> Like that paying her, I'm paying her money to say that. Beautiful. Um, okay, so just to understand it, so you were saying that 30 minutes is ideal, but some people can only do five minutes. So right. for that suggestion of like, if you're going to the Miami Marathon, it's the middle of the winter. If it's someone who's never used a sauna before, should they still start that two weeks before the race and just do five minutes? Or what would it look like for someone changing extremes and wanting to add this into their routine? Yeah, that, that's an awesome question. So if if you're not if, if you're not used to heat therapy in general, I would not introduce it for the first time right before a race. Because you might find out your body completely hates it and does not react well for it. And a week out of a marathon is not the time to figure that out. Right. So even like months ahead of time, I would just inject a couple minutes of sauna here and there. I mean, we're talking about the athletic performance benefits of sauna, right? But there is just life overall health benefits to heat therapy of doing it, you know, once a week or twice a week or something. It's just, it, it's not, it's less of a performance enhancing therapy. It's, it's more of a just like lifestyle thing. So if you're if you're not used to doing sauna, I would 100% do once a week, twice a week, not difficult, right? Like chill sauna sessions, um, if that makes sense, just to kind of get used to it. And then that 
you know, when you're really ready to do the actual protocol of heat therapy for a performance, then that's when I would do the seven days, you know, every day, get in the sauna 14 days out of a race. And then the week of the race, you kind of recover from that. Okay. So how would you incorporate this into marathon or long distance training if you don't have that week of recovery time? If you don't have the week of recovery, I mean, I'd, I'd make the recovery time. <laughs> Unless you're saying your race is like tomorrow and then you don't have the time. What, what do you think, Kat? I think maybe they're mentioning that like they still run kind of that week before a marathon. Oh, um, okay. I, I, when I say recovery because time, long distance is weekly. Um, when I say recovery time for of the heat therapy, I'm talking recovery from the stressor of the heat specifically. So you know, typical marathon training plan, right? You do your longest run. What is that? Three weeks out, then say like 20 miles, and then two weeks out, you do like 15. The week before, you do like 10, and then you do the race, right? Just very roughly. So that last week, you're still obviously running and training. Um, you would just not do any sort of sauna that week to let your body recover and adapt. More importantly, adapt from the sauna stimulus that you introduced 14 days out through seven days out. 